We're back with what I believe to be the third iteration of the Metal Blade podcast. It's complicated because it's hard as a label. How do we do a podcast that isn't lame and isn't overly selly? So we talked about it a bit and we got a co-host with me, Vince. I'm with this guy. Hi, everybody. I'm Riley McShane, uh, singer for A Legion and others. Yeah, and you were yeah. you were in Sons of Aurelius yeah. a couple of years back. And our yeah. engineer, engineer over here is Ryan Williams, who helped me out with the last... Hey! The last version of the podcast. So we're back. We're going to try this again and uh, see if we can't make this one stick. Look, we're all busy. We have a lot to do. This office is small. Um, we're going to give it a shot, man. So thank you, Riley, for helping us out yeah, with man. Uh, this version. All right. So I'm Vince. I've been working at Metal Blade since 2007. I'm from the Midwest. I worked radio in college. I played in d- drums and bands, uh, poorly to average at best. Did some weekend warrior tours back in the day, booked a few shows. That's who I am. So Riley, give us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, I am the singer for the metal boy band Allegion. Uh, I've been with Allegion for two albums now. Um, before that, as Vince mentioned, I sang for Son of Aurelius. I've also worked with Inanimate Existence and uh, I'm currently in Continuum as well as Virulent Depravity uh, on both. So I'm kind of a kind of a little bit of a label slut at the moment, you know, with Metal Blade and Unique Leader and Artisan Era, who are all great guys, all great great guys, great teams. Uh, but yeah, that's who I am. I am a I am a vocalist and musician and celebrity personality. Right. That's- and, <laughs> yeah, and the thing that I find interesting about metal right now, and really a lot of genres, is everyone has to wear a lot of hats. I certainly do here at the office. You wear a lot of hats with the Legion. Oh yeah. Not only do you have a bunch of different voices you can create, um, but what what else do you do with Legion? So I, if we were to break it down into like real business terms, right? Uh, I would say that I am the closest thing to like the COO of Legion. I like run pretty much all of our operations. I'm the point of contact for most of our back end people, like our management, and our booking agent, and you guys at the label. Uh, I also tour manage for us when we're on tour and there's not another tour manager present with a headliner that's above us. I also usually run our merch. Uh, lots, lots of things. Lots yeah, of things. I'm trying to whittle down a couple of those jobs because I did a, a run with Continuum for three weeks and then five days later went out with the Legion for another three weeks uh, on a headliner TMing and doing merch and doing vocals. And by the end of it, I was like, dying's cool. Whatever. Right. <laughs> I could die right now and never do this again. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that burnout is no joke, yeah, man. It was, it was pretty brutal. Uh, but, you know, the funny thing about it is that, like, at the end of it, I find that it's like, oh, man, I'm so done. I'm so ready to just, like, go home and be a piece of shit for a month or two. But then after that, like, first couple weeks lapses, you're like, oh, man, being on tour would be kind of cool again. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible addiction. A good it's, seven to ten days is as long of a vacation as I've found I really ever need before I start getting bored. Yeah, and wanting to come back, no matter how stressful it is. Like, um, I just did a Black Dolly Murder lyric video and I had a relatively little time window to get that done. I was stressed out of my mind. You can ask Ryan. I was ready to jump off a bridge. It turned out okay. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, there, there's something to be said about the chaos uh, that actually makes this an interesting job. Yeah. Versus uh, a typical nine to five where your job is really clearly defined. You only do that thing. You stay in your lane. And, you know, not every company is like that. But a lot of people on earth really kind of exist where they do that one thing and that's it. And you don't have as much of the chaos as you do with like the entertainment and more creative industries, I think. I could be totally wrong. No, you're totally uh, right. I mean, before I was doing this full time, you know, I was managing retail stores, managed a GameStop and I managed a Best Buy and... You know, it's like it's still a little bit more stressful because I was in a, you know, management position and had to delegate and do all that kind of stuff. But it's like for the most part, you know, you know, when you go in, you know, when you clock out, you know what you pretty much have to do. Um, Yeah. And there's like a certain comfort in that for sure. Um, But I've I've found that, you know, starting a project not knowing how it's going to end and then like seeing it come to fruition and being like, oh, cool, it worked is like very rewarding. And I feel like that that feeling of like you know like fuck yeah like we made it happen yeah is a little bit more uh for me personally just gratifying than 
the like, okay, cool. I went to work for two weeks and got my paycheck for the past rest of my life. Like, yeah, yeah when I did landscaping in college, I liked the fact that we could do a job on a site and say, this is done. I'll never be back here again, or I might be back here next summer. Yeah. And that was, it was really cool, but it's definitely a different thing than this kind of never ending creative process where there's always something to do at all times somewhere in some capacity. Yeah. It's just a, a constant barrage. Yeah. And that the the whole, I find that a big part of it is like the, you know, a, a lot of people have this like fear of failure in their, oh, big time. In their, in their work endeavors, you know what yeah. I mean? And that I feel can like really push people away from doing things like starting a business or, you know, embarking on a creative endeavor or doing things like that and just kind of like settling into the comfort zone. Um, but I feel like a lot of people do both you know what i mean like i feel like at least a lot of my peers and a lot of people that i know it's like yeah i have this thing that pays the bills and it's stable and i've got like a family to take care of and all this kind of stuff but then you know on their weekends they're working on really cool projects that like who knows might take off and replace your nine to five kind of thing which is also very inspiring to me in its own right so. yeah when i was in college i had no intentions of doing music full time i was going to get a, a regular gig a, a marketing or business something in milwaukee or chicago and just do bands and book shows on the weekends. That was my plan. Yeah. Before Metal Blade kind of came into the picture. So yeah, it's we're lucky enough to do professionally what many people it's just a hobby. And and for a lot of artists on Metal Blade, it really is a hobby as well. It's just an expensive hobby they do yeah. <laughs> uh, in addition to the regular gigs to pay the bills. But let's talk a little bit about music, man. Yeah. Uh, what did you love in 2019? Uh, 2019 had a, a lot, like really a lot. That new Shadow of Intent record was one of my favorites. Uh, really, really enjoyed that record. It was, you know, cool to see a natural progression coming from them. Uh, Cattle Decaps, Death Atlas was obviously super killer. I've been really close friends with those guys since 2010. My first tour ever was uh, in 2010 with Son of Aurelius. Cattle Decap was headlining with direct support from Devourment. Okay, yeah. I think I remember that tour, and yeah. I think I remember not seeing Sons of Aurelius on it. Uh, we opened. We were yeah. the very first band on a lineup of five. I think after us was Burning the Masses and then Knights of the Abyss. So it yeah. was it was opened by three bands that no longer exist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then headlined by two bands who, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to see, because that tour... You know, now that it's in the past, I feel like I can be honest about it. Was awful. It was it was terrible. It was like twenty people come come to each show. There was a venue in South Carolina uh, that's that's a pretty regular stop on tours, um, and w we all ended up getting escorted out by the cops uh, because four people showed up, and uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> so four people showed up, and the tour manager at the time. Uh, who shall remain nameless. Uh, <laughs> he was like, hey, promoter, pay me. And uh, the promoter was just like, dude, four tickets sold. Like, Damn. I do not have a guarantee for you. I am sorry. And uh, the, <laughs> the tour manager was like, well, that big old PA speaker looks like it's worth about what we are owed. <laughs> I'll oh, just man. take that. And the guy got super spooked and called the cops. Uh, but it was that kind of tour. It was sure. like, it was just dog shit terrible. And now, you know, if, cattle decap and devourment went out today oh my god like it would be insane it would be you know selling out venues all across america um so it's 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 interesting it's really funny to see how the, how the times have changed and how far that band has come between harvest floor and death atlas yeah um, cattle decap and black dahlia are, are two bands that just have become what they are now through sheer grit and just working mm -hmm. nonstop most of the time um, there's definitely a little bit of a gap between the last two Cattle Decap records, but they toured a lot in between. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, when people ask what the secret is, it's really just the music has to be good, of course, and then not quitting. Yeah. And a lot of bands just quit. Yeah. I mean, Cattle Decap's been around since like the mid 90s. Yeah. And like... I, I, we've been doing a lot of, of what you can effectively call education on Cattle Decap because there's still a lot of people within the metal industry that. I think now a lot of them have heard it, but on the last two albums, they would say, oh, I don't like Cattle to Cap, and I'd have to say, have you listened to the recent albums? Because they heard the early stuff and just decided that was it, they didn't like it. Right. And it's so drastically different now than what it used to be. Yeah. So it's been something that's been really fun to see grow and just watch guys work hard and have it work out. 
Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really liked out of 2019, uh, this band from Australia called Voyager. Oh, and so uh, I just talked to you guys about them. Yeah. Uh, they signed a Seasons of Mist in 2018. And they're one of those bands that when you find out about it, you think, what the fuck have I been doing? How did I miss this for so long? Uh, their new album, Colors in the Sun, is amazing. And the album before that, The Ghost Mile, is incredible. Uh, the best way I can figure out how to describe them, and you can let me know if this is totally way off. I saw a tweet about this. I don't remember who tweeted it, but it was as if Tears for Fears and Tesseract uh, had a baby. I feel like that's fair. That's that's really fair. That it's, whole Australian progressive yeah, scene is Neobla just Vizcaris wild. Neobla Vizcaris, Caligula's Horse, uh, Voyager. Like, I didn't realize Caligula's was from Australia as well, so there are. you go. Yeah. They are. They are for sure from Australia. And Psychoptic is incredible. Yep. Yeah. Psychrop- I mean... The, the staple of, of uh, extreme metal. I'm excited for the next time Leprous tours the U.S., I'll tell you that. Oh, that is going to be so Because I've yet to see Leprous live, so okay. I'm pretty pumped can, on that. Can, can we talk about Leprous for a minute? Can sure. We, can we do that? Okay, so I, I love Leprous. I am a huge Leprous fan. I think that Einar Solberg is, like, one of the best modern vocalists ever. Like, such a good singer. Um, that being said, I, I loved The Congregation, and I loved Melina and their new record Pitfalls. I am also a fan of, but it has this, uh, it has this like Christian rock worship vibe. <laughs> Sonically, uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it has, I, I, you know, I get not, that. Yeah. Not lyrically, not themes wise, obviously. Uh, but like, you know, there, well, that was that, it was the second single that they released. Because Below is, is really good. That was the first single they released. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm so ready for this. Has that and Alleviate like, is incredible. Yeah, alleviate, that's the one. Okay, so yeah. Alleviate is, is an amazing song. But that yeah. chorus just gives me, you guys can't see me because this is a podcast, but like this this vibe. Right, like, waving, waving, waving your arms, your arms, in the arms air. back and forth, doing the like Christian rock front row thing where it's sure. just like, <laughs> it's like a slow back yeah. and forth kind of wave. Just the chorus that, and I will fall in the air. Like it's just yeah. so... So, you know, gives gives me those those it makes me want to, you know, go to church and you know, right. kiss Jesus and stuff. Yeah, I'll, uh, go, I'll go to the satanic temple. For yeah, that yeah. One. <laughs> uh, no, I, I know what you're saying. It it's exciting now because with the immediate access to everything, when you find a band you weren't previously aware of, you can dive into the catalog right away yeah. on any one of the services. Um, and it's really allowed me in the last few months to dive into stuff like Voyager and Leprous and things that I just missed. A lot of times in, at the office here, I, I have a little bit of blinders on because I'm focused on Metal Blade releases and what we have to do here because I, I ultimately have to listen to everything. Right. Um, so I know what to send out to radio or hit up Jose at Sirius XM about and kind of send him kind of the best suggestion that I think I might have for them or whatever station it is. Um, so I miss a, a decent amount of things out there that I'm glad when people send me stuff or... You know, like we signed Master Boot Record, and I was aware about that uh, because people sent it to me. Uh, some people that I, I trust their opinions, and they're not just you know some random person on Twitter, which I do check those out as well. But some it's one of those things where it's a testament to people discover music through people they know and trust, and that is far and away the best marketing you can ask for. Uh, the best marketing plan on the planet is never going to beat. Uh, friend to friend, word of mouth, ever at any point in time, and that's what makes metal so like such a tight knit community because people like to talk about it, right? And figure out who the bands are and whatever. Well, I feel like that's that's what good marketing is, is you know what I mean? Like that's the, right. they say the whole like there's no such thing as bad press kind of thing, which is not true. There, um, there is, yeah, there, there is definitely such a thing as bad press. But the the spirit that that saying comes from is the whole like if people are talking about you, they're talking about you. You know what I mean? And like that whole appealing to that word of mouth and that you know human connection in in giving people something to talk about and, and providing them a medium to, you know, explore their opinions with each other, which, you know, everyone has one uh, or two. Sure. Only one or two, though. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, providing that, that outlet and that platform is like the best kind of marketing. Yeah. And I, this is a, an accidental segue into the group we started. So the Blast Fiends on Facebook, the Black Dahlia Murder fan group. Right. Started by fans. Yep. Uh, it's nothing us or the band had any part in. And we couldn't ask for a better group of people just to be excited about a band. Because look, man, this job can be really tough. Getting oh, yeah. people to listen to music. Um, and when when you do a Facebook post and the top comment is like, who? Yeah. Well, that's kind of the point. We're yeah. letting you know, <laughs> you maniac, relax. Um, uh, to have 
fans so excited that they're finding it? Look, I mean, people find out about Black Dahlia Murder stuff before we can get a PR out because of the blasphemes, and they're so on top of merch links going up or YouTube links and all those types of things. So it makes our job not only a lot easier, but fun. Uh, and we started a group for Metal Blade called the Blade Brigade. So it's just kind of a cool community to talk about metal and what's going on at Metal Blade. So if you're interested, you can go on Facebook and type in Blade Brigade and you know let us know what you like, what you don't like, whatever. It's just the place for people to kind of shoot the shit. It is a good. It is a good group. I've definitely uh, popped my pop my face in there a few times. Yeah, uh, I, I, in, I, into that book. I, I do photography for the label, so I do videos and photos. And what, if you see a really cool pro photo on the Metal Blade Instagram from an LA show from a band, it was more than likely me. Yeah. Um, so what I started to do is when I re- remember to do that, I'll drop a photo that might not be on Instagram to that group or something. So it's who knows of- how much it'll grow. I might do more of that. We'll, we'll just kind of see. It's one of those things where, again, we have a million boxes to tick over here for the promotion of an album. Right. So it's when I get to it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to do more is what I'm cool. saying. It, there's, there's definitely some exclusive content in there and it's a good, you know what? It's, it's a good conversation starter. It's like right. we were just talking about that, like human connection of being like, here's the thing. Talk about it. Um, right. you know, it's, it's, that's what I see in that group. Most is just well, like good yeah. conversations happening between people who just give a shit about metal. Yeah. And, and I guess to expand on that really slightly, I used to post concert photos to the metal blade Facebook page early on. And I kind of stopped because all those posts started shitting the bed. Facebook just decided they weren't interesting and stopped pushing it out. Right. So ev- everybody that runs a Facebook page knows you're trying to figure out what Facebook thinks people will care about. Mm-hmm. Because like it or not, we're all beholden to algorithms Ugh. run by Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, et cetera. And we have to figure out how to reach people. And it's not so much that we want to spam. We just want people to know these records exist and to give it a listen, ultimately. Right. So yeah. um, one of the things that we recently did is we, we went to NAMM. Yes. Uh, North American Music Merchants is, I guess, what it stands for. Uh, you know, I never knew that. I'm pretty sure that's what it stands for. And the reason I know is because years ago, we did some Metal Blade TV kind of video uh, drops from NAM. Uh, Denise Kariki directed them. They're, they're hilarious. Greg Weeks from the Red Cord was the host. Nice. And they talk about what it stands for. Uh, th- th- those videos are pretty funny and still on the Metal Blade YouTube. But uh, while you were there, uh, you took the microphones and went off and running to talk to some people. I so, did. What, uh, tell me about the first conversation you had at NAM, and then we'll jump to that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So I was uh, hanging out with uh, Mr. Daviel Davilson, David, Davidian, David Sire, uh, Dave, Dave Davidson, Davidson. From, <laughs> from Revocation. Uh, and we had a, a quick chat uh, for uh, a little while about you know how he's doing, what he was doing at NAM, some of the things coming up for Revocation, but mostly just kind of shooting the shit so uh let's let's take a look at that real quick and uh hear how dave's doing hi dave hi how are you i'm doing good <laughs> this is riley i'm here with uh dave dave yule dave Olson. dave dave david it's the correct pronunciation yeah, of my name you know yep. let's, let's i'm going fully off the cuff here mm. <laughs> yeah, we're starting off strong <laughs> dave yule dave yule davidson from uh reva uh yes Anyway, Dave Davidson, Revocation. How you doing, bud? Doing good. Oh, yeah. How's NAMM treating you so far? It's been busy. Yeah, this is the busiest one I've had so far. Yeah. This year was the first year that I did Metal Allegiance. Oh, sick. That was a lot of fun. Got to play with Andres from Sepultura, Dave Lombardo, Chuck Billy, Bobby Blitz, Jeff Loomis, Mike Portnoy. Can I, uh, can I say uh, something real quick about yeah. Bobby Blitz? Yeah. Have you noticed that he sounds like Dr. Oxo? Uh, I never, <laughs> I never put that together. I've like, never, or, or I mean, he's been around for longer, than, way, way longer, like way longer, longer. Than like Dr. fucking. Rock okay, so, so we we did Ozfest uh, like 2016, and Greg, my uh, guitar player in Legion, is a huge Overkill fan. Uh, and he was like, "Dude, you have to come watch Overkill with me." Like, fucking, you gotta do it. And I, if I can like get over to their stage, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'll check this out with you. Like, I'm, I'm not a big '80s metal guy. I don't know. You, you shredders are of a different world than I am. Uh-huh. Uh, but I get up there, and the first thing I hear, they played "Rotten to the Core," and he's just like, "What's going on, California? 
here out here you all are rotten to the car and i was just like holy fucking shit who is this guy <laughs> so you know and fun 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 segue uh, <laughs> yeah but I, I i like him i like uh, i like overkill they're fucking sick but that's super cool so metal allegiance metal, metal allegiance, allegiance. Okay, yeah so and, we, was... and we did a bunch of different covers you know we played tom sawyer nice um in tribute to neil nice uh, yeah we played uh, Motorhead, Overkill, with, right. with with Troy from Macedon on bass. That was been so cool. So sick. Yeah, yeah. Running Free by Maiden. Um, we did an Overkill song, Wrecking Crew. Nice. Um, and then we played uh, Refuse Resist. Yeah. So those were the songs that I were on. So it was like a, a cool, like, uh, you know, a, a varied set for me in terms of, like, styles of, of metal. Right. Uh, and then there was, like, a ton of, I mean, and the show went on for, like, two and a half hours of, of, of covers. So I couldn't kind of dip in and dip out. And just like hang out and like just be a kid like watching like these like legends yeah. like perform covers with one another. I mean, seeing like Dave Lombardo and Gary Holt like playing Slayer together. That's it was fucking so, so cool. sick. Yeah. And that was at the House of Blues, Anaheim. That was at the House of Blues in Anaheim. I think it was sold out, but if it wasn't sold out, it was like very close. Pretty, it was, like, pretty fucking yeah, close. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was packed. Um, so my my whole uh, I got in Wednesday. Uh, went to a dealer event with Jackson just to kind of promote the new guitar. Went straight to rehearsal, rehearsed until like probably midnight there. And then the very next morning, it's like, just go straight to the convention, or not the convention center, sorry, straight to the House of Blues. So I didn't right. even go to the convention center at Jesus. all on Thursday. It was just like rehearsal for the, for the show all day Thursday. And then we had the show. And then yesterday, um, y you know, just like meeting with different people to promote products, doing some things for Jackson, um, doing some things for Donable because I've got a, a signature pedal with them, the oh, Eidolon. So. What, uh, what, what effect? Uh, so it's a delay, reverb, and boost all in one pedal. So it's like so really kind of made for lead guitar players yeah. of really any so genre. Soloing your face off. Yep. Yep. Hell yeah. Um, so lots of press stuff. And then today I did a signing with Misha and Jeff Loomis at Jackson booth and then did another kind of demo for the pedal doing this interview now you know yep. it's it's just been like just it's been really cram packed with stuff completely non-stop yeah but it's but it's good because like you know when you come out here like i've always wanted to treat nam as like a like a business trip you know like right when i first came out here it was just it was fun and like maybe doing like one or two little business things and it's a, it's really more about like kind of sowing the seeds right for for things down the line right big networking convention yep. pretty yep. much and and now you know after several years of doing this um, yeah, it really feels like okay, cool. Like I'm here. I have meetings. I'm you know, I'm here to do biz. But then I can also like let loose and like have fun with my friends and yeah. and, and catch up. So I, I like to be able to do both. That's kind of like the most fun part about being here. You know what I mean? Is it's like it's 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 important to do the industry stuff. You know what I mean? But seeing like all the homies in one place, of course, it's yeah. like it's a it's it's crazy. It's how, a great reunion. Yeah. yeah. No, it's you know, and and dudes from all different walks of music too. Because sometimes like in the extreme metal world you know you have little reunions here and there but like i've, I've got friends from like a, a pretty diverse array of, of of bands at this point just oh, like yeah. touring and, and and meeting people so it's 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 awesome to see dudes that like you know play rock or play jazz or play metal like all in the same place and not to mention um you know you develop like a really good rapport with with some of your endorsers as well yep like i'm, I'm really close with with all the people that endorse me, yep. um, I like to make more of a connection that's not just like a business thing, like sterile. Like I, I really like to. You yeah, that, know. that FaceTime is important. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you can send so many emails before it's just like okay, you know. Right, and I really consider them friends. You know, like it's so it's it, it's great to see them. Like in addition to getting to do business, like you get to just like hang out and like have a beer and like have some laughs with your buds. The beers, the beers are definitely a, a plus side. I, uh, I I don't I don't do well with crowds. Weird. As as a front guy, right? You yeah. know, I don't. You know, I, when I, when I'm on stage, a crowd is like it's like an object. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's it's not an actual group of living people with lives and stories who are looking at me with their eyes. Um, but <laughs> when I'm here, that's like exactly what it is. I'm just like, oh my god, there's so many people here. So it's like I get here at 10 a.m. and I'm just like. I, oh, I'm so glad there's beer everywhere. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's, <laughs> take, what they, that's what they do. It. I take think, that you know? little and edge there's, off. There's yeah. lots of people that have that same mentality yeah. of like, oh boy, this is this is too much. It's just it's just a lot. It's just a lot of people kind of hanging out. But yeah, fucking so uh, <laughs> so seventy thousand tons of metal was last week. Yes. Uh, did you guys play this year? No. No. Did not. Okay. So neither did we. But we did play together. Yep. In twenty. 
17? 17 that was? I believe so. Yeah, it was a few years ago at this point. So, funny story about that, that, uh, that 70,000 tons of metal. Uh, so, Travis from Cattle couldn't make it, right? Yep. And uh, you and I both did vocals for Cattle at mm-hmm. one point. I can't remember if we did them together. I don't think we did. No, I, we did them but separately. Yeah. We did them separately, yeah. but we were, we were both doing it. Okay, so uh, I'm walking around afterwards and uh you know i'm sure as 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 it was i'm sure it was for you as it was for me where it was like fuck like four sets two over the three days is like enough you know right, I mean? right. and it's always staggered and like this weird like like our first set was like at 5 a.m <laughs> right right yeah and that's then, <laughs> the biggest thing is the time <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it's brutal and so i'm like walking around half you know human and uh this this chick walks up to me and she's just like dude I saw you with cattle. You were amazing. And I was like, oh, dude, thank you so much. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, they hit me up last minute. It was a whole big thing. Like, you know. And uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, but like, you know, it was weird. I'm used to seeing you playing guitar. And I was like, oh, that's a weird thing to say to a guy who doesn't play guitar in his band anyway. Right. Uh, for those of you who are not in the room looking at both of us, it's, it's a little different now, you know. But, but a couple years ago, Dave and I were rocking pretty similar looks glasses lots of tattoos on our arms kind of short beards so <laughs> this chick runs into me and she's just like oh yeah i was weird seeing you not with the guitar and i was like that's a weird thing to say and uh she's like kind of like just like 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 lost puppying me for a while right and i was like this is this is weird like right. like i know there's a legion fans but not like this right, like right. What, what the fuck is going on and uh she starts like dropping like song names at me that i've like never heard before and i was right. like i was like hey who who do you think I am? And she was like, "You're Dave from Revocation." Oh, that's <laughs> I, was, great. I was just like, "No, no, I'm not." And I, I tried I tried to find you to, to 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 introduce, but that was that was one of the more fun things that happened to me on that seventy thousand tons. This actually opens up into a funny segue uh, that I don't think I've ever talked about in an interview, but this happens to me constantly. <laughs> not not being uh, you know mistaken for you, but yeah. for I don't know what it is about my face <laughs> but i get mistaken for people all the time so the, and like, you know some people like they have a look or whatever but it's like for me it, it's it's not like an actor that i look like like yeah. it's uh, people's friends people's like you know brother-in-law or whatever it <laughs> happens to me constantly it's probably having to be like a hundred times at this point Ooh. to the it's it's insane it's it's weird because it's like it's know. happened to me so many times i've been mistaken for a dude who's also named Dave which is super <laughs> weird I was at a restaurant and I think it was the waiter was like Dave I'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like like starts talking and he's like oh wait holy shit you look just like my friend named Dave I'm like well that's very strange because my name is also Dave <laughs> You know, and I'm sitting here like an asshole, like thinking, like, oh no, like, like I, this guy definitely knows me. And I have no recollection no fucking of idea. who I this mean, person is. I'm like racking my brain. I'm like, where could we have met? And this and that. That's just kind of like the touring guy syndrome, though. You know what I mean? Where I, it's like, I feel like it happens to me a disproportionate amount of well, times. Well, like, no matter where I'm at. And again, it's not like it's like band dudes. It's like just the, the, random the, people. The forgetting thing, though. The forgetting. That's that's oh, what oh, I'm talking oh, about. Oh is yeah, the, like, yeah, yeah. Is, like, dude, I fucking I feel like such a piece of shit. Right, right. So often right, because it's right. like someone will walk up to me. Like, oh, dude, how's how's it going? And I'm yeah. like, hey, man, right? Like, right. How, how are you, dude? Yeah. Like, it's you know, but yeah, that's 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 the life. That's the, the touring guy syndrome. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. I, I swear, anyone who's listening that I or Dave has done this to, it's not your it's not your fault. <laughs> it's, you're very memorable, and you are special, and we love you. Uh, I just meet a hundred of you for months at a time and it's hard it's hard. <laughs> but that's weird that like it's like because uh, like you know not to like fucking s- s- tongue your balls or anything but it's like you're kind of like a guy you know what i mean like you're like it's like you've d- a- had accomplishments and are in the public spotlight and like people generally know who you are when they see you so it's funny that it's like well, well i'm not like i'm like fa- i'm not like famous you know what i mean not, you're like, not like, fucking I, i'm like talking about like just, star, i'm not talking about being at a metal show and people thinking like oh, I'm, I'm talking about just, just like, being at like <laughs> I'm in line at starbucks and someone thinks i'm like their dad your other dad. like yeah <laughs> you know it's just weird <laughs> it's like all the time but it's never it's never i've never been uh mistaken for someone's enemy which is good it's always someone's like friend or like acquaintance they like like they're genuinely happy to see me i'm waiting for the other shoe to drop where it's just like oh 
you owe me recognize some, me you, you, you owe me like, five thousand dollars right right like <laughs> dave right, just, I'm, oh, fuck. I'm like oh <laughs> shit oh damn <laughs> yeah 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 that's uh you know but it's so yeah so that's so it's the territory so now been mistaken now yes now yep. and now, yes and now i have been mistaken as yeah. you yeah so it's a on, curse maybe on the it, boat. It, it gets it's, you know, it's it passes passing along, along through yeah. the ages yeah. <laughs> have fun with that yeah i'm i'm ready for it i'm yeah. just going to start responding to dave when people sure. you know when people that that, that could be a, a good approach for that cuz that, that happens to me kind of often too i'm bald bearded guys you know there's right. there's a lot of us but i don't think out we there. look that similar no we don't look the same at all like right, you, have, you, know, you have fucking <laughs> blue eyes and right, like right. kind of lighter hair i'm like it's 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 from afar having only seen either of us on a stage from kind of far away. Sure, sure. I, I could understand. Yeah. You know, it's it's similar facial characteristics. Right. But, but just because we have a beard yeah. doesn't mean we're, the, you know, the same <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but yeah, that was my that was my favorite 70K my, story. My roommate uh, is, has a twin brother. So, like... They uh, get confused I, for each other, like all I the time. I hate that. Do you know the? Uh, do you know? Do you know? Uh, uh, Andrew Gravy from that's Richard? my roommate. Is that your roommate? Yeah, yeah. His brother Kevin. His brother Kevin. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's really funny that that yeah. is your roommate, and that yeah. was my immediate go to yeah. to yeah. twin dudes who right. are bald and bearded that right. look right. too fucking similar. Like yeah. usually, well, I mean, twins, they're twins. You know. Well, okay, but like usually, twins will go out of their way to not look. <laughs> exactly the fucking same all the time like there's things you can modify like the length of your beard or like the way you do your hair or like certain out like fucking andrew and kevin fucking gravy train like those dudes like look exactly the same all it's like they it's like they go out of their way to look exactly I mean, they, the they, same. they gotta look and it looks good on them you it, know it so, does it does look good on, on both of them yeah i think once in a while like kevin will do like a mustache or something like that that's, like, like that's true i have up. seen yeah. stashed kevin i uh mix so andrew filled in for legion for a tour mm -hmm. uh but i had toured with him prior to that like way back in 2011 uh with wretched with my old band son of Aurelius. so i'm a i'm a i'm a big fan of the gravy boys uh i love those dudes they're, they're the best like they are fantastic just humans. hilarious guys like su super posy like can't say enough nice things about those guys but it's fu it's funny because <coughs> you know living with, with like, living with andrew you know i'll be like all right kevin all right kevin's going to nam like all right Make sure you're cool. Like, be nice to everybody. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> right? Because then, like, I don't want to bump into anyone. You know, like, <laughs> be like, wow, dude, I saw you name and you were an right, asshole. Right. I wasn't you, even there. You were drunk on your <laughs> ass, man. Like, you're, you're a mess. Like, you know, whatever. like, like, damn it, no, that was my that was my uh, twin brother. Like, yeah, sure, man, likely story. Yeah. <laughs> like, crashed my party and drank all the beer. Yeah, yeah, of course it was your twin. Right, you dick. right, right. Uh, it's it's great because both those dudes are, are rhythm guys for yeah. for the listeners that yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. who who we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, great great bassist and a great drummer. Yeah, great bassist, great drummer. Uh, Kevin, who is he playing with? The last time I hung out with Kevin, It'd be funny if they both played drums or something. You know, yeah, like right, they both played bass. You know? <laughs> both fucking bass players. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, Kevin was playing with a uh, Gloom the last time we were hanging together, and he's okay. doing something now. I think he plays in a band called the Osadax. The the o the what Osadox the Osadox yeah okay well it means bone devourer that's pretty metal yeah that's yeah and I didn't learn that from Kevin I knew that separately it was on like a, is it is it in do you have Revo lyrics that are like Osadox uh no I don't but it's uh it's a type of worm it's, oh uh, os yeah it's a it's a bone worm. eating worm uh I think that's just like the translation to it but it's a bottom feeder basically it's oh, like okay. it's like a sea worm that like eats like corpses and stuff uh, like that okay yeah bone worm. Boneworm also, also pretty metal. Yeah, if kind of more slammy, grindy. If anyone's listening and you know wants to take the name Boneworm, I mean, Google it first. It could it right. could be a thing. But you know what? My my philosophy is like as long as they have under like a thousand followers, just go for it. That's that's you know, that's you how could, you go. You yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of metal guys out there. We all think of the same shit. You know, as long as you make it popular first, then it's then it's fine. Right. right. Says the band who released a song called All Hail Science after. The Faceless released a song called Hail Science. Uh, oh, damn. That's a thing. I didn't, <laughs> we, yeah, I didn't realize we, that. We, we did that. We did wow. that thing. There's also, what's the other Faceless song that Allegion? What, what, uh, <laughs> uh, Accelerated Evolution. Also a Faceless song that came out, I think, before the Allegion song, Accelerated Evolution. You know? Wow. Okay. So you guys just... I, I, I mostly just want to eat Michael Keane's ass. That's what it is. Gotcha. Is I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Your next album is called I Love You, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> next one is called... <laughs> Keen Machine. That's new, new Legion album. 
cool. Uh, All right. Did you see them, by the way, at the the thing? Did you go to the... They just played uh, at 1720 on Thursday, I think, oh, with some no. bands? Oh, I, I was playing Metal Legion. Oh, that, oh, that was Thursday night that you did? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. I was, I was at Dime Bash, but a ton of friends went and said yeah, it was great. Bo- it sucks that they're both at the same night, you know, because there's a lot of competition, obviously, but... Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, both shows were always packed, but yeah. it would be cool, too. I, I, how it was explained to me is, like, there's so much competition to, like, for venue holds, so, like, right. when you get first crack at a venue, like, you just don't want to give it up. Because if you do, and then, like, you, and then something gets fucked up, and, you, and, like, you will lose that venue forever. Yeah. Like, it ain't coming back. Yeah, that's pretty now. brutal. Yeah. And especially for, like, that, those kinds of profiles of shows, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, that's brutal. There's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I've learned a lot as a touring guy about mm-hmm. the way promoters and, and booking agents and, and venue owners and things like that will, uh, tend to some of them have real long ropes but there's a lot i feel like it's like the the more up there you get with your career you know what i mean like you run into a lot more of those like total no bullshit kind of people um which is good because you know there's more money at stake and more all that kind of stuff but yeah it's crazy it's crazy but yeah it's a. Uh, it's a bummer that they're all on the same night for sure. Yeah. It's like I just want to see more of my friends in one yeah, place. Yeah, that's kind of what people, it is. I don't want I don't want people because the crowd was great either way. Yeah, but it's like I don't want people to have to feel like oh and I got to do that over this. And, yeah, and, and then I've like, got I got like one friend that was like I was getting anxiety about which show to go to. I just ended up staying in and like ordering you know, <laughs> chicken tenders or whatever, just not doing anything. Right, well, right, it's, right. You know, I fucking didn't want to break anyone's heart. I'm, like, I'm out here on you know internet recorded thing, being like, oh yeah, speaking of the faces, did you go see them? Yeah, me neither. Like. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> it's you know it's it's a bummer, but I'm I'm glad that our friends are also getting those opportunities at the same time. So it's right, you right. know it's it's the ray of sunshine through the clouds of me not being able to go to all three big shows happening pretty much every night that Nam is going on. Well, you missed the phases, but you can name your next album like every song title they have already put I, out. I could in, do in that. I could of, name of our next album Autotheism. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> a Legion Call presents. it the faceless. Yeah, just get, yeah, dude, just fucking. Just go double, you know, just, just go hard. Double down. On it. Yeah. Double down. <laughs> yeah. This is the faceless. Yeah. Buy a Legion uh, on our album, The Faceless. And then I just say, I just say fucking Xeno Christ over and over and over again. That's there all. You, That's there all you all go. Yeah. Yep. Fucking hell. That'll do wonders. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, maybe it'll land us a tour with The Faceless. Uh, you know, fucking, it's the highest form of flattery is plagiarism, I hear. <laughs> yes, yeah, people love that. Yeah. Is there anything you're working on right now outside of Revo and any tours coming up? Any any things going on? Yeah, so I've got a new band called Gargoyle. Um, we just got signed to Season of Mist. We're going to be putting out our debut full length album sometime this year. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure when yet. We're we're in the process of just like finishing up the mixes and getting the artwork all set. So I uh, should be handing everything in like in a, in a few weeks and. Once we do, we can kind of start the clock from there. But I'm, I'm assuming like within the next six months, it, it should be coming out. So that's sick. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, it's, it's definitely different than Revocation, but uh, you know, it's still in a, it, it still has a metal aesthetic, but but definitely with more leaning more towards like I guess like prog rock. Yeah, um, it it definitely does. So I and we opened s- yes, for so, you guys. So yeah. Gargoyle yeah. played. Uh, they were the live band at the listening party for Apoptosis. Yes. So I got the chance to see you guys live, and it fucking rules. Thank it's you. Super sick. Your Thank singer you. is rad. Yeah. Like definitely yeah. brings those prog metal, prog rock, I should say, those yeah. like prog rock vibes. And then you're obviously over there shredding, fucking, which is you know uh, to be expected. But yeah, super fucking cool. I really really like it. Thank um, you, man. Thank you. And then uh, and that's Gargoyle No E. You're right. Yeah. No, no E on the you end of that need, gargoyle. You don't need the E. This ain't no it's, Disney show. It's not pronounced gargoyle <laughs> right? it, it would be cool if the did the guy who did the Disney guy, what's his name? David Keith. Get, see, see, you know, see? this is a whole. I had no idea that was even a cartoon. Oh man, but you're like great. the tenth person to be like, like the cartoon. Like, I'm like, <laughs> no, like the like the gar- like, like, like the, the fucking statues, like, like the man. Statue. Like, yeah. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> so the cartoon is all about statues that like come to life and like I par- par- that, party yeah. at night, you know. <laughs> uh, but this guy, this super famous voice actor, uh, whose name he's he's so famous that I can't remember his name. Uh, it's it's David Keith or Keith David, something like that. But he did the voice for uh, Spawn as well, okay. in the HBO animated gotcha. Spawn okay. series. Super. He, oh, he's the ass. No, he's not the ass to ass guy in Requiem for a Dream. But he okay. is. 
he's like the big skid, like the big scary black pimp dude in fucking Requiem for a Dream. Fucking, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen it's, it. Yeah, but he's 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 also not. He's just got this great voice. This fucking really deep, sultry, fucking just uh-huh. commanding, powerful. So you know, down the line, if you ever need someone to be like, say some mystical wizard shit on, on the gargoyle on the album. gargoyle thing, you well, could get the gargoyles guy. We'll see. And it it, it would I, you know. I'm I'm all in favor for this. Okay, yeah. Mostly I, because it's it's my idea. That's why I'm in right, favor for right. it. But well, you're 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 a manager now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Check sure check out Gargoyle, of course, Revocation, and uh, anything that this man with the golden hands puts his his paws on. Uh, Dave, thanks again for hanging out. Thanks for having me. I love and appreciate you. Until next time. Till next time. Hell yeah. Dave Davidson, how cool is that dude? Dude, he's so rad, man. He's such an easy dude to talk to and, you know, such such a chill guy. It's, you know, he's he's like that perfect balance uh between being super chill and super driven. Um Yeah. He's one of the more hard working. I would compare him a lot to Herman Lee yeah. with his uh level of playing mixed with his business acumen. Oh yeah. Um just two in- incredible human beings dude, that speaking- I love to work with. They they make this job fun because they'll ask me questions that I have to stop and go, I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. And, and mostly I can answer just about any musician's question, but they're so familiar with the intimate details of the business that it's one of the reasons they're successful, to be honest. I mean, it's just the hard oh, yeah. work, a mix of hard work, talent, and uh, business acumen for sure. Speaking of his playing, uh, a video of him at NAM surfaced of him playing on a, one of Tosa Nabasi's new guitars. Oh, nice. Uh, doing some shit with his right hand that I was just like, well, cancel guitar. Like, <laughs> right. it's it's done. The top of the mountain's been reached. It was insane. It was like... Okay, I'll check that out. Oh, my God. It was so crazy. It was just like, bro, this guy's right hand is on fire. Like, oh. Yeah, what, I wonder That's when... Uh, the most impressive things about him is that it's just those crazy... Just, it's just like, yeah. ugh, gnarly. Those gallops. Yeah, I wonder when yeah. he's going to do Herman Lee's stream. Herman Lee on Twitch, by the way, if you're not following Herman Lee on Twitch, you should... Uh, he streams all kinds of crazy, like a little bit of gaming, mostly playing. And he's had Tosin Abasi on, yep. uh, Misha Mansoor, which is two of those, like all those guys jamming together, just that group, those pairs. It, it's incredible that musicians have the the ability now to just let fans be weird, creepy voyeurs, voyeurs yeah. and watch that. <laughs> that. That part of streaming, at least, is that right? Oh yeah. It's just you know, you yeah. want to watch people do stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, a big part you used of to streaming. get arrested for that. Yeah, <laughs> and now we monetize it on Twitch. <laughs> uh, Jeff Bezos making more money. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, a big part of Twitch streaming is just it's just interaction. You know what I mean? Right. Like a lot of people think you have to be like super good at this one particular game, or you have to be you know just this you know just pro gamer status, or like you know right. I, I have any kind of applicable skill. Uh, but you don't really. You just have to be a sick personality and talk to people, and you know provide entertainment. It's like. I don't know, streaming is like it's like live podcasting like it's it really is essentially the same thing did you see kit boga with his herman lee stream kit no. boga is that guy that um he wastes call oh, scammers times yeah he has a few different voices he has a voice modulator i guess that's the correct word i'm not sure right my favorite character he does is the old woman <laughs> and he did the old woman voice with herman lee playing the neighbor uh, that also doesn't know about comput- computers. And I think it was one of those Microsoft refund scams. Uh, it's amazing. So Kit Boga, K-I-T-B-O-G-A, he also has highlight videos on YouTube, which a lot of streamers do now too. It's not yeah. just Twitch. Uh, you have the YouTube component with the highlights and other things that don't quite fit within well, the, the Twitch ecosystem. It's, it's crazy how uh, how that whole world has kind of evolved. So it's like, it used to be like, okay, you're a YouTuber, right? Like you're you're a video blogger. You you know have the thing you do on YouTube, and you post a video once every couple of weeks, and you rack up the views, and you get a check from YouTube. Um, and then that became like entirely too saturated with people who thought they were awesome that were not, kind of gumming up the works. Well, you need a um, a, a lot of views on YouTube to generate oh, yeah. any meaningful amount of revenue. Oh yeah, I mean it's it 100%. takes it takes a lot. You know, until you have like three hundred, you know, at, at least a quarter million subscribers right you know what i mean like you can't really go full time until time. you're getting a couple million views per video yeah absolutely. realistically as far as i'm aware but then you know because there became like a couple top dogs in that and then just a bunch of people you know trying to do it 
You're not uh, going to top video game donkey. You well, know? Every, yeah, no, you're never going to do it. Everybody, sw- you know, Game Grumps, come on. No, everybody switched to Twitch, right? Right. And uh, started streaming and, you know, it was like, it was like, oh, this is like a YouTube video, but I could watch it in real time. And oh my God, it's so cool. It's like a highlight reel that I don't have to, you know, sift through and I can, you know, comment on and, you know, he, oh my God, that streamer said my handle. I'm going right. to tip him $50. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and that worked for a long time. And then Twitch got bought by Amazon and the algorithms all changed and, you know, Mixer opened up and, and it became kind of more of like a competitive business platform right? because now there's like a bazillion people streaming. And I have found that a lot of people have actually started switching back over to YouTube videos and highlight reels and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's interesting to, to see how those those two have kind of ping ponged well, with each other for the past right? like ten years. Yeah, I stream on Twitch. Uh, I've been doing it for the past like two or three years, on and off. Um, but I'm a perfect testament to one of those like small time streamers who, you know, I hit affiliate status pretty quick, but I have never got up to partner. And right. uh, it's, it's affiliate just, status is relatively simple. The the bar for that is not it's, that it's pretty crazy. low. It's but pretty partner low. is a whole other thing. Yeah, and you know what it is is partner is just the viewer thing. I think it's like 75 concurrent viewers for like a week straight or something like that, which doesn't sound like a lot, but like it really is. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll get like 20, 30, 40 viewers. You have to think about it. You know, a lot of people hear a number like 75 and are, you know, they think about it in terms of like, you know, of numbers or like dollars or whatever it is that you think about when you think of numbers. Right. And they don't think about it as like people. Right. Right. When you think about it as like people and you you translate that thought of like, imagine 75 people standing around you watching <laughs> you play video games. Creepy like that's hell. a lot of people. Yeah. Like, um, it's great. You know, so it's, 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 it's definitely harder to hit those numbers on Twitch consistently. Um, and the way the Twitch algorithm works so that they're not just like cashing out partnerships to everyone um, is that it's like they don't count raids or oh wow okay yeah or like lurks or anything like that and even like the lurkers there's like algorithms in place where it's like if you have more than nine tabs open and you're you know and and twitch is on there like it doesn't count as a view or if your twitch tab is muted it doesn't count as a view and like all kinds of weird things to prevent channels from growing (laughs) just in case people don't know a raid is when a twitch streamer sends all of their current viewers to another channel usually when they're signing off right so it's um, interesting they wouldn't count that, but I guess it kind of makes sense because that would be a way to game the system. Right. Well, I've had like like uh, Joe Bad, uh, Joe Badalino, I think is how he, his 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 full name, but Joe Bad from a uh, Joe Bad from is uh, uh, fit for an autopsy. Oh, okay. Uh, he's yeah. he's the vocalist for that band, and he is a Twitch partner. Um, he got into it through Matt Heafy from Trivium, who right. is also a Twitch partner. Matt, Matt's one of the best examples of how to do it. Yeah, along he's, with he's Herman really Lee. good yeah. at it. Um, and uh, Joe. And I became like streamer buddies for a minute. Uh, and he's rated me a few times. And he's the kind of guy who gets like a couple hundred viewers, you know, when he when he streams. That's cool. And uh, yeah, it's like it's cool, like, you know, getting those those numbers in the room and seeing how many of those people like latch on and then subscribe or even just follow. And it's uh, it's really neat. But yeah, it doesn't translate into into partnership. But I, where I was going with that is that uh, Twitch has now become very oversaturated as well right um, there's a lot of people that want to make it yeah yeah you know and there's and, and streaming's fun you know what i mean and it's a it's a it's a work from home gig if you can make it happen for you and it's uh you know sounds doing fun something until you, love. you do it yeah it's when you turn something you hey take it from me when you turn something you love that's a hobby into a job you know there's yeah. days where you're like i don't really feel like playing video games no choice, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's your job now. You, you play video games you don't for like a that game. You don't like that game anymore? Too bad. It's oh, the most dude. popular one and the, you have to do it. <laughs> the last game I streamed was like an old school RPG and I got like 20 hours in across like two weeks of streaming and everybody was like, oh, bro, you still have like 100 hours left. And I was like, oh, my. I'm out. Uh, like I get, yeah, dude. And then the holidays hit, and I like literally have not streamed since. Yeah, well, we we have a, I, I dread it going yeah, back. Yeah, we, we have a, a few artists on the label that stream. Bo Looters from uh, Harm's Way streams. Nice. Uh, you obviously Herman Lee. I actually have the Metal Blade Twitch channel set up to host whoever's on. Nice. Um, who else, Ryan? Do you remember who else is uh, streaming for Metal Blade? Uh, Max Lavelle. Oh yeah, Max nice. from Black Dahlia is on there every once in a while. He created some really sick Castlevania s graphics for his channel. I remember. Nice. 
Yeah, I think there's one or two others, but um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head here. And yeah, I guess that that kind of transitions into we're kind of talking about what can be the repeating segment that we always go back to at the end of this podcast. And the biggest thing that we have in common outside of metal is video games. Yeah, go figure. I, I'm a I'm a PC gamer for the most part. I have a PS4 and a Switch as well. I, I was really hesitant on the Switch until my niece and nephew got one. And I played it, and I realized it was one of the most brilliantly designed pieces of it software and hardware ever. So good. It is it's incredible. so good. So, yeah, I, uh, I've been playing a little bit of everything. But one of the things, actually, before we dive into that, I wanted to add about Twitch is Dragon Force headline TwitchCon last fall. They did. Yeah. And Heidi and I from the Metal Blade office here went down there to check that out. Uh, TwitchCon, obviously, uh, we, we got in through Dragon Force because tickets were already sold out. Mm-hmm. And... I've been to a couple conventions before. I know the deal. I've been to E3, NAM, BlizzCon. TwitchCon was one of the best conventions I've ever been to. It was big, but not too big. Everyone that was there seemed really cool, and it was a really neat community. And sure, Twitch is owned by Amazon, but they they seem to be really driving the driving home the thing that they are, they're still running their business. It's still all the Twitch people. Right. It's just now they have a bigger bank to pull from, I guess. Like, yeah, probably much. the biggest bank on earth. Yeah, and it's you um, know, and it's they do things now like you know Thursday night football on Twitch and sure, you know, yeah, things, they're things always that Amazon have always had their hands in, kind just of like thing. YouTube streaming MLB or yeah. whatever. Uh, but oh, anyway, what I was going to say is everyone at Twitch Twitch was unbelievably cool to us. Uh, they're really excited about having Dragon Force involved, uh, which is cool to see. They put together this really awesome highlight reel that played. It was all stuff from Herman's channel. Played before Dragon Force went on. Dragon Force had a five minute set change between the end of the Twitch on oh. opening ceremonies and going on. And while that video played, they wheeled everything out on stage, including the two giant arcade cabinets that they have live. Yes. And the dragon on the drum riser. So it was all on wheels. They rolled it out. And it was a little awkward at first in the arena. Um, and it took a good couple songs before everyone got out of their chairs and got into it. And then it turned into one of the cooler shows I've ever seen. And someone from Twitch backstage, uh, when I introduced myself, when they were talking to Herman, they said, oh man, we got Metal Blade to come to TwitchCon. And for us, I mean, you know, metal in the grand scheme of business, the business world, when you're talking about big companies, especially gaming companies, oh, yeah. were unbelievably small by way of comparison. Oh yeah. Uh, the amount of fans, the revenue, all those types of things, the metal industry is tiny compared yeah. to all that. So that's really kind of the, the weird... I guess mental power of music is that in people's minds, if you're a fan of metal is one of the coolest things ever. It doesn't matter that it's not as big as one one of my favorite bits is that Rihanna could eat a sandwich next to a microphone and it would outstream on Spotify, the entire metal blade catalog in 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, di- it's different worlds. So the fact that someone at Twitch was excited, we were there was really cool. And they're adding uh, music people to Twitch and they seem to be kind of taking that really seriously. So I don't know. We're kind of hoping there's going to be more opportunities for metal artists to reach fans yeah. also through that platform. So who knows? It, it's really, it's one of those things that I hope uh, bands start using more as they're able to, because mm-hmm. it takes a bit of technical know-how to be a streamer. It does. And it, it not only does it take the technical know-how, but it's like you said, it's like every day, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah, it's you a gotta, job. You got to really stick to is, a schedule, yeah. even if you're only streaming for like an hour a day, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. got, if, if you set yourself to be like, I stream Monday through Friday at 5 p.m., like I said, even if you're only doing it for like an hour, like you got to do it. Yeah. Like you got to get on there. You got to stream. And I think that when it comes to bands or labels doing that kind of thing, it, it becomes more difficult because we've already got so much stuff on our plate. Yeah. Um. So it's cool to see individual artists who, you know, we know are very busy, you know, take the time to jump into something like live streaming. Yep. Um. Speaking of live streaming, what have, uh, what have you been playing lately? Well, I have no kids, so I have the time. Yeah. <laughs> I game yeah, as much as same. I can. Uh, I go to the gym. You know, I try. I work. I I work a sedentary office job. I don't move a lot while I'm here, other than the wild arm flailing I do when I'm angry or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so I play a lot of Total War Warhammer Two, and I was super pumped uh, when Henry Henry Cavill was on his Witcher uh, Netflix promo and yeah. started talking about. Somebody asked him uh, PS4 or Xbox, and he said PC. Yep. It's like I. C- would love that man more. Yep, he, I mean, I, I love consoles; they're fine, but I just primarily game on PC. So, Total War Warhammer Two, I've got about 500 hours in that game. I can't wait until I do a third one. Yep. 
Uh, I just discovered Mordhau. Oh, God, Mordhau so good. Uh, it was on sale on Steam. So the famous, like, oh, I'm going to buy this one too. Yeah. Ho- hopefully, actually play it. <laughs> um, and it's incredible. I got a few of my friends back in the Midwest to buy it. And we've been hacking limbs off of other people it and bots in games. So incredibly gratifying. I don't know yeah. what it is about just dismembering, just dismembering farmers in a. 3D atmosphere, right? Just, like how uh, it just releases all of my serotonin. How un, how metal is it to have a medieval multiplayer combat game? And how basic is that idea? By the way, I guess yeah, there it's was there was sandboxy. Like, there was chivalry before that, which I never played, but right. I've heard that's kind of one it, of the models for Mordhau. It's but, kind of the same, and like for yeah. for honor is also kind of right, similar. Yeah, for honor. Um, you know, it spans time periods, but it's the same kind of like you know, like medieval combat or. Yeah, it, and I, not not modern combat, you know what I mean? Like no one's using guns, it's like swords or yeah. sh- swords and shields and Long maces, bows and all that kind of and, stuff. Yeah. Um, but for honor is just kind of like a one on one kind right. of deal. Uh, Mordhau is chaos. Yeah, Mordhau is total chaos. It I is, am in no way good at that game. My friends and I just uh, we finally got through our first twenty one wave horde. We completed the horde mode. Nice. After twenty one waves, it's over. So we finally did that once. Uh, but when it comes to fighting other people it's been out for so long and the learning curve is so steep for getting good at the actual combat that i mostly just die if i go like three and 12 in a match i'm pumped yeah yeah no 100 percent. and yeah it's it's one of those things where it's like that's that's some people's game you know what i mean like they they just mort out all day every day um you know, it's it's like Rocket League or Call of Duty. It's like, you know, when right. you when you try to dip your toes into the pool, you know, you get your foot bit off by sharks. It's like, oh my yeah. god, like <laughs> Yeah, do I want to really do this? And yeah. Ryan and I were playing World of Warcraft Classic for a while. We yeah. we've been talking about diving back in cuz I still think that's one of the most fun gaming experiences of all time. Warcraft, the current retail stuff is cool. I don't dislike it. It's just there's something about the classic kind of stripped down experience where it's a little bit more sandbox and less here's a bunch of dailies you have to do yeah we're getting real nerdy now i love this. no yeah we're, we're getting real into it uh, right into my veins yeah <laughs> so what what are you playing these days uh so speaking of wow uh it, it has never been my mmo of choice ever sure. i i try you know i had a lot of disdain for that game when it first launched oh me too and uh you know because i had like good friends who i hadn't seen for years be like oh dude like i'm in town let's hang out and they'd be like like, uh, okay like i guess i'll i'll come out for a little while and then sure. we hang out for half an hour and they'd be like look dude like i i, I, I gotta go do this raid and i'm just right. like are you fucking kidding me right well, now it's, like it's not an easy and, thing in classic when you when there's no uh pickup groups yeah when you have no, to put like together a group to, of people exactly it becomes an actual responsibility and it really does but it you know i digress i, I right. hated it at first right. for those reasons and uh you know now that it's become you know much more of like a point and click pick your own adventure kind of game yeah. uh it's it's a little bit more digestible i've played maybe 100 hours of wow uh i had an orc hunter nice and uh it was good um however i am way big on final fantasy i like grew up playing all the old square rpgs like even when square was still squaresoft before they merged with enix right um yeah i beat six on snes when it was just a cartridge of three yep. and seven those are the only two i ever beat oh so. god beyond all, that my so knowledge good. isn't that great so uh 14 is their second mmo 11 was the first one uh and 14 is just like oh god it's just so good it's it's so good and it it, it does follow a lot of those same like kind of watered down mechanics that wow has but it's just like in a world that i find more aesthetic sure um mmo that i recently picked up uh that has been blowing my fucking mind is black desert online oh yeah i heard a lot about dude ryan we were talking about that right so so sick so sick and it's not that it's like particularly pioneering in the world of mmos but the combat system like it is so fucking cool like you utilize so if you've played an mmo before you know that a lot of the times it's just like you know you chain your skills to one two three four five you know sure hit 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 your skills you know left click right click on your enemies and just kind of like rinse and repeat forever sure um black desert uses like key combos so it's like if you're doing you know shift c or shift x or shift e it, it does a different uh, a different attack and then they pair that with like which direction you're moving and all this okay. kind of stuff so the move lists are 
incredibly extensive and it creates like almost like a fighting game type of combat system but using mouse and keyboard weird it's yeah. so so sick it takes a little getting used to sure uh but once you've done your first like 20 levels or so it's amazing the only downfall to that game where i think a lot of people fall off is that once you get up to where you're doing like max level like you know level 60 kind of stuff um it's like 50 60 hours to your next level right it's <laughs> wild how long it takes and how much grinding you have to do in that game uh for end game stuff well that you know the the grind is the game man i mean it that's... really is but they have they they you know it's it's a mostly free game it's like 10 bucks uh there's no monthly yeah, subscription. It's super cheap on steam it's yeah. super cheap no monthly subscription but uh where they make their money is that their store front so it's like the pearl marketplace or something like that uh, they do tons of stuff through there, tons of costumes, tons of aesthetic things, right? Um, which makes the game more personalized, which I personally like a lot. Um, but yeah, fantastic MMO. I've been playing a lot of that lately. And then when I'm not deep diving and uh, you know shutting myself off from the civilized world, playing MMOs all day, uh, I've been keeping it pretty casual. Been doing a lot of PS4 stuff. I recently sure. uh, platinumed uh, that new Star Wars game. Oh yeah, I just got that on PC. Dude, it's, it's a lot like Dark Souls. It is. Yeah. It's it's like it, it's the Star Wars Dark Souls Assassin's Creed I never it knew really I is. wanted. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. Uh it was it was an easy platinum too, which was nice because usually in Souls type games it's like you have to play this game 7 times to platinum it. Right. Um and I'm a big I'm a big trophy guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a... Yeah, I don't have too many I don't think I have any platinum games on PS4. I just don't I put mean... in the time. But yeah, Ryan and I also played uh with one or two other people dark souls three last year oh, yeah. i put about 100 hours into that i hated it uh at first it took me a couple different tries but once i kind of dove in and figured it out it became probably one of the most rewarding and visually stimulating gaming experiences i've ever had yeah i can start a new character and beat the first boss in one or two tries now where before i would throw my controller through a window oh yeah dude the FromSoft games you know their whole the whole fan base's thing is the like get good, get good scrub. Yeah. Like, you know, and it really forces you to do that. Like there's no right. hand holding in those games, which is nice. It harkens back to the days that we grew up playing video games where it's yeah. like the only way, you know, when when graphical capability and memory size on cartridges was still so small that the only way to get replay value out of a game was to make it fucking stupid difficult. Right. You know, like you like the metal slugs of that time yeah. and like like you had to run through the first like metal slugs were made for eating quarters uh, but yeah i know what you mean yeah exactly but you know (laughs) a a perfect example is the uh the jurassic park game for For snes snes impossible impossible and now there are speed runs on youtube and now half an hour (laughs) and but that's the thing is that it's like you know how many times did someone have to play that game to be able to speed run it in half an hour because honestly it's like if you know what you're doing it's a 30 minute game but if you don't know what you're doing it's like 10 years of your life and it's right. it's it's wild and and i feel like the souls games have harkened back to that method of game design uh really all the from soft games like you have bloodborne on there as well and then yeah. sekiro which uh i did a uh, i did a like 10 best games of 2019 for revolver and uh wasn't it metal sucks or revolver i think it was revolver okay yeah. and uh it was you know a lot of the stuff that i had played a lot of stuff that i liked but my number 1 was sekiro and then, like two, like two or three days after I submitted the article, but like a week before it got published, the Game Awards happened, and they also named Sekiro their number one game. Right. And I was like, "Makes great, sense. Great minds. Great minds." <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but it's it's so good. It's just like it's not quite as challenging as the Souls games until you get to New Game Plus. But uh, one of the big things when it dropped was people were like, oh, it's like got such an appetizing aesthetic and it's got such a cool story. Like, why is it so hard? Why isn't there an easy mode kind of thing for people who just like don't really understand the Didn't spirit know. of those games? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the developers came out and they were like, it starts on easy mode. Like, right. you, you went, <laughs> when you get like a quarter of the way through the game, you can get this in-game item called the Demon's Bell. And if you ring it, it brings it to like native difficulty. Uh, oh, and it's, man. it's hard. <laughs> I had no it's idea. It's fucking insane. And so it's like, and then when you do New Game Plus, it gets even more difficult. So if you do New Game Plus and ring the Demon's Bell, it's like, welcome to Dark Souls. Like, it's fucking, right. yeah, it's oh, that's terrible. Awesome. Well, uh, the last thing I wanted to bring up before we kind of, I guess, getting close to wrapping up episode one of this new podcast is 
Uh, Elden Ring, the new FromSoft game that's being developed. Have you yeah, heard about that? I have. With lore made by George R. R. Martin, yep. which are written, I guess is the more proper word. I, I couldn't be more excited about a game I know almost nothing about because yeah. it's really just the idea that it exists has been announced in, in the name and not much else. Yeah, pretty much. So it's it's crazy to think about. I mean, how long does it take a Legion to write and record an album? We have been on a pretty consistent every other year schedule, right? right? So it's like... And a lot of that time is spent touring and stuff. So if you're if you're boiling down just the writing recording process, it's like a year. You know what I mean? A little under a year. Yeah. And how long does it take to develop a game? Oh, dude, so so much longer. And that's <laughs> and that's uh, not even really taking into account. There's dozens to hundreds of people working on that yeah. game. Yeah, a, a band. There, is there, how many five people, dudes? How many people know? work on an album? The guys in the band and or the the, the people like, in the band, the humans, maybe, women too. Maybe a um, a or two dozen people yeah and, at, at max if outside of the pop industry the album artist um the album art artist um photographer engineer producer whoever mixes and masters yep. um, sometimes that's the same person and you, then there's the people at the label if you really want to expand on that so a few dozen yeah uh there's a, it takes so many people so long to do one video game yeah. it's really hard to I think mean, about the, the example that i always go to on that is that it's like if you want to get a little bit of perspective on what making a video game is like and how many people it takes to to create something the batman arkham series yeah. had an entire team not just a person a team of people of like five or six people just for his cape physics like crazy it's insane it's it's fucking bananas how many people it's like and then they you know it starts off in like a pretty enclosed linear space and the next game is a little bit bigger and then the third game is like a huge one-to-one -one new york city you know, right. gigantic and it's just like like programming all the physics and all of the different 3d axes for that kind of shit is just like it's too much Crazy, for me man. to think about it makes my chest tight i'm like ugh. well b b besides metal i like talking about games and oh, yeah. i have the luxury of it's still a hobby and not a job so for me it's still fun yeah. and that, that's what's always cool when i meet people in the video game world i've met a, a number of them at this point they want to talk to me about metal and i want to talk to them about games and I feel like we we're both excited to talk about it, but we both get annoyed that we're talking about work. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just different worlds. Um, so uh, yeah, man, that that this is I think the first Metal Blade podcast. What's your social uh, channels? Where oh, can people find you? Yeah, so my uh, my Facebook and my Instagram uh, and my Twitch are all just my first and last name, Riley McShane. Sometimes separated by an underscore, but usually just Riley McShane. I'm I'm uh, lucky enough to have a comically irish cartoon leprechaun of a name that it not is, very yeah. many people share it with me uh you know i'm not a mike jones uh so yeah just riley mcshane is usually on my handles twitter i believe is all hail riley uh akin to our the Allegiant song all hail science and uh oh yeah i did the video for that too you did do the video for that that was yeah. a fun video that I was back to, back I when i still had okay. hair yeah. before, before <laughs> i knew how to dress myself yeah. uh <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a fun one. But yeah, all hail Riley on Twitter, Riley McShane on just about everything else, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram. Uh, we're also going to launch a companion playlist for this podcast um, that should be up on Spotify and maybe some other spots, so you can listen. You can yeah. you can put throw on some headphones and hear some of the tunes we talked about in this podcast or related tunes. Which maybe some current Metal Blade releases. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Let us know what you want to hear. If you have any ideas uh, for things that you you'd want Metal Blade people to talk about. We're happy to take a listen, maybe drop it in the Blade Brigade Facebook group. Yeah, please do. Uh, I would love more than anything to add a Q&A section to the end of this That'd be podcast. Cool. That yeah. would be amazing. Hit up Blade Brigade and, uh, and we're you gonna, can hit us up there. Yeah, and we're going to bring you as many guests as we can, Metal Blade artists and beyond that, I hope. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes, man. Hey. Thanks uh, for joining us, Riley, and we'll catch you guys next time on the Metal Blade Podcast. See y'all there.